Hey guys, so I'm back here with London and I wanted to go into pricing because I didn't want to make that video very long. So this video, the first video I did changing, this video I'm probably not so much going to do much with her because I'm not going to be changing her like every video, every time you see her um, because I don't want to put a lot of wear and tear on her. Um, she is textured and I do believe that her paint is secure and that she would be able to sustain quite a bit of uh clothes changing but um i just prefer to keep her as nice as i first got her so i don't want to do a lot of brushing in her hair and all that stuff and so i guess you know sometimes people say you know when you get a baby that you spend quite a bit of money for can you really enjoy it do you feel like you have more restraints with that baby or not i guess that answer is kind of it depends on how comfortable you are with the artist's work or how familiar. For me, it's more familiar. I'm not familiar, as familiar with Sylvia's work. So um, I tend to be a little bit more cautious. But I can look at her and touch her and see from me painting myself. And I feel very confident that her work, her her paint is is good. But I just, you know, I love her so much I don't want to do too much. And I, I've gotten to that point anyway where I don't change my babies daily. And that's probably why I like to have multiple babies. Because when you have multiple babies, you can kind of switch around the babies. Um, and you don't have to, you know, you don't have to keep um, changing the same baby over and over and over again. So... Um, yeah. Oh, here's that famous bottle, guys, if that makes your heart sing. <laughs> I noticed ever since I made that one video where I was like, oh, God, I'm so over it. Everybody got to have the bottle. It's even more people put the bottle in their pictures now. So it's like, okay, great. I got the point. All right. So, yeah. So, um, so I did something, I think, before, before I bought this baby from Sylvia, I bought a another very very um high-end prototype artist work and um that was and i say that because that was my first i think that was one of my first ones that for a reborn i usually say i'm not spending over a certain amount of money for a reborn i just don't see the purpose da, 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 da. so um but when i did that i i saw the purpose <laughs> Um, their work is seamless. Um, it's very neat. There's things in their, their work that come from, you can tell that comes from really, really a very, very skilled painter. Um, which is very different from, you know, some people as, as we grow into this art. Um, and I think both Sylvia and the other artists that I bought from, actually went to school for art as well so they have this whole they hold the whole they have the whole package because um i know from my daughter that went to art school in art they teach them she learned um to draw to uh to sculpt and to paint and to do photography all of that in one was art okay so that when you see some of these big artists photography skills are amazing those the their painting is amazing sometimes they'll even share their drawings that they can draw those are like the real artists like yeah like they're born with this gift not something they like just woke up one morning and said I'm gonna be an artist and stuff look like you know chicken scratch no and I'm not saying that you can just you have to go to school to be an artist because you definitely have to have it that gift um but I'm just saying it it makes their work worth it um I did learn that they there are things that they do and they don't do in their work and um but it doesn't take away from their work if that makes sense so there's a lot of detailing and extra little things that 
I see in some artists work and then some artists don't do it, but they know what to put just enough to what to put in to make it look super real. I think for me, you know, uh, scratches and bumps and milk bumps and veining and all that stuff is stuff to add. You know, it does add like extra realism and stuff like that. But I think as long as when you look at a baby, you can be like, oh, my God, that that's that's a real baby. That's high. That's high end. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care if it costs you 200. I don't care if it costs you 2000. I don't care what it is. If that is the impression you get when you first see it and not like, oh, that's that's that that doll is cute. Like, you know, when you can't even hop, you when you struggle to call it a doll, you know, it look real. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, I I think that, you know, my my perspective and my way of collecting is changing every day like i don't know i i i my cap changed <laughs> on what i'm willing to spend on a reborn at this point and i want to talk about something else that i say all the time and i and this just triggered this thought right now so i'm i'm winging it so i might go back and forth on it a lot of times I will say I'm not going to spend silicone money on a reborn. But let's think about that. Silicone has its own nuances. And it's a very imperfect medium. Um, it's beautiful. The feel is amazing. And it is something about silicone that you cannot get from reborns and then the reborns have their own beauty because there are certain securities that you get from reborns that you cannot get from silicone like and it's it's, it's kind of silly like for instance i can damage a limb on my reborn and although it may be challenging to match that color up, but there's a higher chance of me getting a replacement limb, getting it redone, <laughs> than me ripping off a limb on a silicone baby and being able to get it attached back. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I know that's drastic. But I'm just saying they both have their, each one of them have their qualities. But let's say you're a collector that absolutely do not like silicone then your value system is going to change. When you pay a significant amount for a reborn, it makes sense to you because you have you value a reborn more than you do a silicone. So does that make that right or wrong? There's no right or wrong answer. The value system is created by those who pay that money for that particular item. We as collectors dictate price. We we put the value on the dolls. We say what it's worth because we pay what we're willing to pay to get that doll. So I have to program myself to stop saying that. Although I still in my mind because my value system is that silicone is worth more. And there's a lot of reasons why I say that. I say that because silicone, um, the resale value is always much higher than the resale value on a reborn. So I feel like when I'm investing in a silicone, I'm not as pinned down to it as I am with a reborn because a lot of times you're going to lose money on a reborn versus silicone you may not lose money on reborn in fact some of these people out here are making money on reborns so when you look at it from that standpoint then um i still think i have a cap i'm not gonna pay you know for five thousand dollars on a uh on a reborn okay um 
I'm not going to pay six, seven thousand dollars on a reborn. Um, the same with a partial silicone. Um, partial silicones, they do their, they still, their value system is still higher than reborns, but I'm not going to pay full body price for a partial. And I've seen some go for over $7,000 ball partial. Um, not rooted, no eyebrows. I don't even, I can't remember if they had eyelashes. Um, but a rare and by a very sought after artist. So I got it. I understood it. But for me, that's not where my value and sister lie. So a lot of this stuff is based on how we feel and what we want. And so we say all these things, but a lot of times we say it as if it has to be the fact. It has to be facts or it has to be hard truth. So just because I say something, don't make it the rule or make it factual. These are just my opinions and from my perspective. And, and if me and your perspective differ, then definitely our opinions are going to be way off base. So... That is that is my thought process on that. But I do believe that there is a lot of value in these reborn babies when you can get one that's amazing. I love my silicone and don't get me wrong. Um, I, I just, if I had to choose over silicone and reborn a lot of times, I usually tend to choose the silicone, but it's kind of changing up a little bit. Now, if it was an amazing reborn baby that I really, really wanted versus a silicone baby that it was like, eh, not so great, I would go with the reborn. So you see how that works? It's really all about the individual baby itself. So it's a case-by-case -case scenario. Would I have paid the amount that I paid for my Sylvia baby for just a random reborn? Absolutely not. And it wasn't because of her name. It was because I liked what she did with the sculpt. I love artists that do something different with the babies. You know, like I really do. Um, I like when you can, when certain artists, you you know, there are certain artists out here that you look at them, you be like, is that, what sculpt is that? And it could be the most popular sculpt. And you're like, is that, is that Shabisky Wabi? Man, or is that Wasabi? You know, it's like, I don't know. And then it's because the artist, Put so much into the baby that they changed the look of the baby or they painted it so softly that they gave it a whole nother look you know I don't know this just you know so price is price so my thing is if you have a price range try to stay within that price range but look within that price range, but don't just buy just because something is in that price range. I see a lot of collectors doing that. Like, I only want to pay $700. So, oh, this baby is $700. I must buy this one. No, 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 no. Then you get it and it's like, I don't like it. You know, it's because you're buying strictly off of price. You got to say, okay, this is my budget, but I want to find something I love within that budget. You know, stop just buying just to buy. And even when I talk to my customers and they will tell you, sometimes, you know, I've had a customer that I'm like, this is not going to be the baby for you. No, I want to buy it. This is not going to be the baby for you. I can, I, you know, from what you say you love and what you're looking for, you, this is not it. And then, you know, if they still want to buy it, of course, I'm not going to turn down the money. Now, do I do that all the time? No. You want to buy it? I need to sell the dog. Go ahead, buy it. Fine. That's your, your business. That's why I say if you want to sell it, that's fine. But every now and then, you know, especially if it's a customer that a person that has been, you know, trying to get my work for a while, it's like I really want them to get something that I think that they're going to really like that's going to fit into their collecting style. But then, you know, deep down, I don't really know what it is that they're really looking for, seeking for, you know, within my work. I don't know what part of my work that they like the most. You know what I mean? So I can't always just say, no, 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 don't buy my work. I'm not definitely not going to kill every sale. But I'm just saying, sometimes I just think that we need to take our time and not just buy because it's important. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a $5,000 silicone baby. 
and then the first baby that's post is five thousand dollars or four thousand five hundred you're like that is it i want it no no baby don't do that get what pulls you in first you know first look for the particular baby that you like and then you 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 see the prices and then you be like okay all right, so that one is out because that one is too high. Okay, this one is a little bit above my price range. Is it worth going over my price range or not? And try not to do that too often because I've done that so much and it just like have killed me in the end. But if it's something you're like, this is everything that I want. I know it's like a thousand more than I anticipated on paying, but I have the thousand dollar more and I really, really want it, and I'm probably not gonna find this baby anytime soon, then go for it. You know, that's why I don't knock people that pay 20,000, 30,000 for dolls. If that's what they can afford and they love it and it, it, it pulls to them, by all means, I think they should do it. Can I, can I do it comfortably like that? No, because I don't have it like that. But I'm telling y'all, if I had a whole bunch of money, listen, I would drop 20 grand on the dream silicone baby in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. That's just the truth. But right now with my broke business, no ma'am. <laughs> no ma'am. I can't do it. But otherwise, I would. So yeah. So anyway, all that this video is to say, to sum it up, is that price is based on your value system, what you're willing to pay. Um, the artists, they base their prices on their own value system and their own self-worth and what they feel like where they're at with their art. I've had other artists tell me I should be charging more or, you know, somebody might feel like I should be charging less. But I base it off of where I feel like I am, you know, and that's that. So really, we set the value as collectors. Um, artists set their prices based off of their perspective and their self-worth system and their and how much they feel like they put into it, baby. So therefore, that's that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. That is it. And I will talk to you guys later. Let me know in the comment section if you want to hear my opinion on other subjects, other topics, and I'll be sure to consider it. <laughs> Okay. All right, guys. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Miss Serenity underscore Smith. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up. Goodbye.